Well, we had another rainy day yesterday, and uh, so I figured it was time to get the sawmill out. Now, last fall, I got the idea to put the sawmill up in the air on a pallet rack to keep it out of the way, and um, it turns out that may not have been such a good idea because it like, takes half a day to get it out uh, when they put it up there by the time you have to move stuff around and you know, there you can see getting it down with the lift and stuff. Um, one thing I can say is that little Presto lift, that's a uh, real handy thing to have around. It it does allow you to stack things up pretty good. But So, you know, this is just taking it down off the rack. And um, I had to get it ready to cut up a couple logs and cut up some tomato steaks. And um, so I had to get it ready and get it down and you know do the greasing on it and change the oil and get everything ready to go so you know this is just basically the start of the video showing how I um kind of had to store it up out of the way which I probably won't do that again but running out of space and you know you really do have to stack stuff sometimes so just you know I got it down on the pallet and then just pull it off the pallet and you know that was pretty simple and and to um, make room to move things around, I had to go back and put other things back up on the uh, pallet rack there. So um, this is a old Cub Cadet that I've had for years and years and years. And um, I'm hoping someday to make like one of those UTVs out of it or, you know, those side-by-side -side things. Um, so I've been keeping that one around. But I've got another one there, too, that's uh, going up on Craigslist shortly. Um, I've been doing a lot of clean-out with Craigslist lately, and that really is a good way to pick up some fast cash. So, you know, I just put this Cub Cadet up there and um, got that out of the way. And then I have got another old tri-built chipper that I really don't use anymore. I just kind of throw the branches in the woods for the uh, animals to have nests and live in so that that sucker is going up on craigslist real sh you know real soon too so you know but it's nice to um to have the option to be able to stack some stuff up in the air um with this little presto lift it was you know it was one of those little things that i bought years ago that really comes in handy for just about everything that involves picking up you know and moving stuff around I uh, got that all all cleared out so I can move the sawmill around in there now and have room to, to get the mill off the pallet there and just set it back on the tracks. And, you know, I got that little lift again, just picking it up and, you know, kind of kind of helps save an old man's back here. So um, once I got that down on the mill, I went through and um, I did the oil change and I did every grease everything and... Um, Actually, I put a new blade on it because it had an old uh, blade that was pretty dull on it and stuff. So I just, you know, got it all ready to go while we had a pretty crummy day out. Yeah, this, uh, this little Hudson Mill has been really handy little thing to have. It's um, given me an unlimited supply of lumber from, you know, stuff that... Normally would have just gone in the fireplace and been heat. And I got this um, this toolbox that I keep with the mill too. It's one of those Fat Max ones that's got like the O-ring seal in it to keep stuff nice and dry. Um, and I just thought I'd you know show you what I carry around with the mill and what I basically use with the mill. And it was just some of those huts and brackets and one of those spinner wrenches. And, um, you know, a couple other little things and, a, um, you know, there's just a case for the torque wrench that I use for it. And then I got this little rubber mallet at the dollar store in case the dogs stick. And then I got this uh, metal detector from Harbor Freight that I, I keep with it too because um, it really does come in handy if you get a yard log. It has saved me a blade, I know that. Um, and all they did is I bought it and I cut down the aluminum shaft on it. And I, you know, made it so it would fit in the toolbox in the bottom there. And, you know, it took a little while to shorten it and wrap the uh, cord around it a little bit more. But um, it seems to do a pretty good job for, you know, for like a $30 thing. It does actually find the um, the metal 
Um, it has a harder time of it's in vertically, but uh, and there's that spanner wrench I got. I had to take the handles off my jack, so um, I use that spanner wrench, or I've got a adapter for the uh, impact gun if I want to do it quicker. And there's that little torque wrench I picked up for like 10 bucks at Harbor Freight. And it seems to be pretty accurate too. And I keep a couple of these little tie wraps with me in case you have to change a blade out. Uh, and roll the old blade up and secure it. And then, you know, a piece, a pair of clippers here to clip the tie wraps on the new blades when you unroll them. So, um, these are the brackets that Hudson gives you to keep the log centered when you can't use it when it's too big for the dogs. And they give you double-sided, double-headed nails for it, but I don't like them. And what I got is this, uh, impact adapter. And I got these garage door mounting lag bolts, that they call them. And instead of using the nails on it, I like to use these, uh, these lag bolts. They seem to be more secure and they don't rock loose. And they're, you know, real easy to put in and take out with a impact gun with a battery operated one so you know that's basically what I carry with the mill and um, you know it just all fits in this box and stays together and a couple couple rags just in case you need them and um, you know it's just nice to have everything together when you when you take it out so the next day it stopped raining finally and the garden's too muddy to do anything so pulled the mill out and set it up um, that's a pretty easy job, just, you know, level it up, and then I had to fill up the, uh, lube tank, and, um, I ran out of Cascade, and I had a bunch of Dawn, so, um, I decided to use some Dawn in with my water this time. It seems to work just about as good. Cascade works a little bit better, but, um, you know, so I just put a good squeeze of Dawn in there, and, you know, fill the rest of the tank up, maybe about three quarters of the way with, with water, and, you know, put the cap on to keep sawdust out, and that's all ready to go. Then you got to go back and torque the blade, because um, you always have to loosen it when you're done with the mill. So I've got this torque wrench, and you just have to, you know, go until it clicks. And then I got a couple of cherry, small cherry logs I'm going to mill for this video. Um, they fell down, they blew down this spring, and um, actually they're pretty dry. I think they were dead for a while, but... Um, I was going to make firewood out of them, but I decided to try and, you know, mill them and see what they are. It's only, I think that one there is only about 12 inches on the big end and um, about 10 foot long. So that's the uh, first one. And those little pallet forks I got, those clamp-on forks, are really, um, they've become a pretty handy item on the little tractor. I've been using them a lot for everything. And, um... They don't pick up too heavy a log, but, you know, they will move a log this size very easily. So, um, you know, it's quicker than using a loader or using that jack on the loader that I built. So, you know, for small stuff, I'm going to be using them from now on. So I got that first log on there, and then there's that tow board I made. A little bit bigger on one end than the other, so I got to jack it up before I uh, put the dogs on it. So, um, you know, this is just... Just kind of a boring video cutting the log now and you know this is at real time speed so um, that's how fast it cuts uh, can't really push it much faster that's it um, and you can see um, some of the videos I've done using really oversized logs on this thing you can see the whole mill rocking and stuff and um, you can see that when you use uh, you know logs that this mill is made for there's none of that it's a very rock solid little mill I've been real happy with it. So, um, you know, this is just going through, and I'm just, I'm just slicing this into um, just plain slices. Uh, not doing anything fancy with it. I figured I'd leave the bark on because I really don't know what I want to do with the wood yet. So I'm just going to take it and um, just cutting uh, one inch and uh, five quarters slices, of, you know, out of the whole log. I figure that'll give me the, the most options later. You can always square them up into a cant and work from that. And you'll, you get a little less wood, but you get cleaner wood too. So, so this basically is, you know, just, just slicing up a log that, you know, really was just something that fell down in the woods. And, um, you know, it would have rotted in a couple of years anyway. And um, 
actually it's turning into some uh, really nice cherry I'm, I'm really surprised it's uh it's nice solid wood nothing that's uh you know soft or mushy or anything like that so um you know being even though it was kind of like a dead log it's really good that little digital readout thing that i put on there was really helpful too i'm finding um you can just reset zero and then you know crank down whatever you want like that was i cranked down inch and a quarter just to give me a um you know a little bit thinner than inch and a quarter board and here's what i got out of the first log um you know that's really a, a pretty nice nice pile of cherry for you know being a scrap log so and then i i went back and i had the the next section of it another 10 foot up and um this one's a lot smaller i've never actually cut a log that's this small it's only about i think probably about eight inches diameter but um i figured i'd give it a try and you know see if i could get anything good out of it while i was at it so, um, you know, it's back to the, the tractor with the little forks on. And um, like I've said, you know, already, they're, they're turning out to be a real handy little item. And, you know, I still I haven't seen any flexing of my bucket or anything. I've put some pretty good loads on them. And I've been trying to keep a real good watch on it because some people warned me that um, you can bend the bucket. But uh, I think as long as you keep them pretty wide like I have them, they, um, they seem to be holding up real good so far. Plus they make it, you know, a lot easier to just uh, move around small stuff like this. And I must say, uh, you know, I've had this little Hudson HFE 21 sawmill for about just about four years now. And... Um, I never realized just how handy a sawmill would be. Um, it's probably paid for itself in the amount of lumber that I've cut and dried for my projects a couple times over. And, you know, you can even see in a, a crappy old log like this, I'm still going to get something that's fairly decent out of it. And, you know, there's a the log dog on it. You just kind of push it in place and lock it. And I really like how they work. They, um, they really do work uh, good and they're easy to use, I find. So this one's a little bit more cockeyed, and you know, it's got like a little bit of a bend in it and stuff. So I'm just gonna start whittling away at it and see what I get out of this. And there you can see you gotta. I um, I found I have to turn that little lube on and off um, during between cuts and stuff like that. Otherwise, it just runs out on the ground. Um, and there's another thing that helps to have around the mill is that one of those log right can hooks. They are, um, they are awesome. I had one of those cheap ones and I bent it the first time I used it. And this log right just, I, no way I could ever bend it. But. So I just, you know, I just cut a flat on one side of this log and um, just kind of flipped it over. And it's just sitting basically on the, uh, the rails of the mill. And figure I'll just start, you know, cutting down and... Um, See what I get out of it, and in the end, I got um, got a couple nice pieces of five quarters, and then I got a um, a nice eight quarter slab that was left at the end. That really does. I mean, it's a quick and easy job, and um, for anything this small, if you get into you know a little bit bigger logs, can be a little bit of work, but actually, you know, logs like this are kind of fun and relaxing. The um, pieces that you cut are easy to pick up and you know remove from the mill and you know it goes quick and easy to flip and everything else so if you do ever get a mill um you know little logs like about this size you know 12 inches diameter or so are really a good place to start with i think so um this cherry's real dry and you can see how fine the sawdust is coming out of it too. It's like um it's like super fine. Um if it's if it's if it's still wet, then you get like a stringier sawdust coming out of it. But um you know, it cuts like butter though with this uh, and I'm using the ten degree blade still because that's all I have, so but um you know, all in all I I did uh spend a couple hours messing with it and um I was just about running out of cherry anyway, so I did wind up getting some real nice cherry boards. 
Now after cutting these cherry boards, I went on to uh, cut a couple one of those ash logs up in the, that you saw in the background there into tomato steaks. But um, the video would have just gotten too long, so I decided I'll just break that off into another video on its own that's a lot shorter. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe.